with CPA Amy Vetter. Are you still a CPA or are you a recovering CPA or uh, <laughs> CPA with the yogi, with the author, with the speaker, all of those things, Amy? Exactly. I am okay. not a practicing CPA, but I okay. work heavily as a thought leader in the accounting industry. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, if you want to help spread Amy's message, if you're part of the Amy fan club, if you are part of the Friends Network, this is not the kid from The Shining, the creepy kid <laughs> from The Shining. This is what we want you to do over the share button, because as any CPA or any financially oriented or, or metrically oriented person knows these algorithms on Facebook are the enemy and we want to share the message. So hit the share button while this is live, hit the share button when this isn't live anymore. And let's get this message out because it is frankly an awesome message. Any words before we go live with the podcast recording, Amy? No. Good. All right. We'll do that. All right. We are live in three, two, we are live with Amy Vetter. Amy, are you ready to talk? I am ready to talk. Amy Vetter brings a yin and yang perspective to business as a keynote speaker, author, and contributor to Inc.com. Based on Amy's work-life lessons as a CPA, a yogi, and a technologist, she authored the book, Business, Balance, and Bliss, How the B3 Method Can Transform Your Career and Life. Follow Amy on Twitter at Amy Vetter CPA. Amy Vetter, welcome to the talk. Thanks. I'm happy to be here. Well, I love your talk and I love the lessons of it. And uh, I, I love how you worked so hard to become a partner in the CPA firm. And once you got there, it was a, a comment from one of the other partners basically saying something to the effect of he can't wait until he retires that caused you to rethink the entire thing. This was your whole life, Amy. What was going on in that moment for you? Yeah, I, you know, it, we all have these moments that actually stop us in our tracks of wherever we're heading or think we're heading. And I really, had always driven myself toward that goal. And it was actually him saying, we were here till retirement. And at the time I was 32, uh, that I realized, you know, I didn't know if this is what I wanted to do till I was, you know, 65 or older. And I never really thought about it that way. It was more a goal to achieve. And I never, you know, even thought to think about whether there might be something else I want to do with my career. And so that really was a moment for me to step back and pause. And I, I think that's important when we talk about these things, because we all go through them. And, you know, my message isn't to quit what you do. Mm -hmm. It is to pivot, to actually pause and, and, you know, learn about yourself before you make any drastic changes. Well, and as a fellow, uh, overachiever myself, I know in that moment when, when you make a major life uh, transition like that, or you realize your values don't long any longer line up with all this work you've been doing, it at least for me, in similar parts in my life, and I think for a lot of Talk Universe, it becomes an identity thing. Was mm -hmm. that a case for you? Did you kind of have to go back and kind of rebuild who you felt like you were, Amy? Absolutely. Well, I not even just rebuild, get to know myself, uh, you know, even I, better. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think a lot of times we, you know, we set goals for ourselves when we're very young uh, and wherever those messages come from and where we begin those journeys. And uh, it's really hard to step back and think about, you know, your purpose in life. And that is a really important thing to help shift you because a lot of times in business we talk about business goals and business plans and numbers and achievements but we don't actually step back for ourselves do our own reviews and find out what is our personal purpose and then once we do that it helps us to better align back to the right moves in our profession, our personal life, whatever, once we really nail down for us, what is our personal purpose and what do we want to achieve as a person? 
So Talk Universe, you heard it right here. It starts with purpose. It starts from ripping back all of the other busyness and starting with purpose. What was uh, what was the transition like for you, Amy? I mean, it, it sounds like a pretty dramatic transition. You've done all kinds of different things. You've got a new book out. What what was the transition like? Did you have to work equally hard at transitioning into the new role as you did to become a partner in a CPA firm, or was it different than that? It was hard. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's easy. Those journeys are hard, and it takes a lot of work to um, really assess what's going on inside of you. Also, trying to decipher between what your beliefs are and who you really are, because so many people put messages in your head throughout your life and you're, you really have to start getting down to what, what are your own beliefs and uh, what is your purpose? And I think for me, you know, I grew up in an entrepreneur family. Mm. I've been an entrepreneur mm -hmm. a number of times, still am. And, you know, my bigger purpose was to really help entrepreneurs, small business owners to achieve. And as an accountant and a CPA, that still met that. But what was important to get back to that purpose is no matter what pivots I've made in my career, does it still align to that bigger purpose for me so that you know these business owners can stay in business, support their families, and be able to thrive? Now, uh, tell me a little bit more about the book. How was the process like for you? What's in the book? What is the B3 method? Uh, I think we caught it in the the bio, Business Balance and Bliss. Please tell us a little bit more about that, Amy. Sure. So, well, you know, just going back to my accountant roots, business plus balance equals bliss. So it is a formula, ah. but, it's, <laughs> but it is to help you uh, trigger for yourself how to apply this into your life. And what I found in my own journey was once I started getting back to who I was and spending time with myself, and a lot of times as adults, we think that's selfish. Um, we give that time away when we try to take time for ourselves because we feel guilty doing it. But what we actually learn about ourselves, we can bring back into business situations. So for an example, when you've got a stressful business meeting or interaction, you know, where you're feeling really tense. One of the balance activities that I started doing in my life was yoga. And, you know, when I got into yoga, it wasn't something that I thought would be something I would ever do as a type A personality, but, you know, did it. And, you know, in yoga classes, the instructor will say a lot, you know, breathe, inhale, exhale. And in the beginning, I would just ignore it. I was like, yeah, I don't get it. So <laughs> I'm just going to ignore that. And then after the repetition and time going back mm -hmm. and realizing when I breathe, how that changed how I felt internally. Well, when you learn something like that about yourself, bringing that back into your business life, when you're feeling stress or anxiety, mm -hmm. or instead of reacting right away to a situation, how can you take a moment, pause and breathe to shift that whole energy? which is what creates bliss, which is the maintenance of happiness. And there's no mm. one answer, right? It's like we find these things that work for us. And then over time, we have to keep that awareness of when we shift, life circumstances change, and how we need to keep shift shifting to maintain that happiness or bliss. Powerful. So bliss is the maintenance of happiness, mm -hmm. which is a, a really neat way. Just happiness uh, as a construct or a concept that can be maintained and uh, expanded and a resource instead of some kind of a muse that just kind of comes over us with uh, aside from from anything we can control. Um, is, is that something that you learned in the class as well? Uh, or did they teach you that in accounting uh, school? <laughs> Um, Sorry. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> this is a real, real easy <laughs> shot right there. <laughs> uh, I think it was something I learned over time mm. and through mindfulness practices as well is that we allow our life to just happen to us many times and we don't give, we don't take action to control happiness, to control joy and what things we can do to create that in our body and in our interactions with other people. 
And so it is up to us to notice rather than just let life happen and then feel like, oh, well, I feel like this because this happened or I feel like instead of instead of turning it around and saying, you know what, I'm off. Something's mm -hmm. off here. I need to step back and pause, reassess where I'm at and where do I need to shift so that I can get back to that place of bliss. Well, we've been enjoying this conversation with Amy Vetter. Her talk is called Disconnect to Connect, The Path to Work-Life Harmony. And we're going to hear a little bit more of the backstory of her journey, Talk Universe. And we are about to come back in just a second with the Blitz Round. And it's time for the Blitz Round. We are here with Amy Vetter. I'm about to ask her a series of either-or questions related to the preparation and performance of her TEDx uh, Cincinnati, I believe it was, talk. Mm -hmm. Am I yeah. correct? Yeah, TEDx Cincinnati. All right. First question. Were you invited to speak or did you apply? I applied. Ah, just like just like the rest of us talk universe. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Everybody applied today. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Second question, are you a memorizer, an improviser, or a blender? I'm a blender. How did that work for you? Well, I had to, it, it was a great experience because I really had to learn memorization and do it in a natural way. And uh, that was a new skill to really rehearse and try to uh, achieve for that talk. <laughs> So you were, it sounds like you were able, you started with memorization, but you were able to internalize it enough that it was really integrated and it came out naturally and you were present and, you know, all, all of these uh, kind of yoga type mindful uh, things um, uh, were all packed into the mix as a result. Or would you uh, describe it differently than that? I, I yeah, I you have to memorize it first because you are on a time limit. Um, and then figure out how to make it feel natural. And I have to tell you my tip, um, which sounds really silly, but uh, I practiced with my 12 year old son <laughs> and it ended up being such a great experience because if he didn't understand something I was saying, like a 12 year old needs to understand in a way that you mm -hmm. explain it. And uh, since you're speaking so rapidly and don't mm -hmm. have time to build up. And so he actually gave me some great tips that helped me in my talk when I did it. So. Talk universe, I love that. Practice with <laughs> a 12 year old. And and I mean, why, why did that work? It's because we're the whole point of a branded stage like a TED or a TEDx or any idea centric as opposed to speaker centric platform, it's all about us getting out of the silo, getting out of our language, uh, in Amy's case, accounting language or even yoga type language. Mm -hmm. We have to get out of our language silo so that we can connect with whoever is out in the audience. What better way to do that than to get a, a 12 year old uh, son <laughs> or you know family member who's staring yeah. you down? Oh man, extra, extra bonus <laughs> points for doing that, Amy. Hey, besides that, besides that, you answered my next question. I'm going to answer it, uh, ask it again. What's another tip, tool, or technique that helped you? Uh, I, I would say practice, practice, practice. Uh, it's really important you know your content and um, that you feel comfortable uh, mm -hmm. doing it. So the first... I actually went through an audition process, which was a smaller event first, where we only had two and a half minutes. So trying to get a message across in two and a half minutes, having people review your scripts and give you feedback and just narrowing it down. So you want to like narrow it down uh, to what you think won't fill the time because it will fill the time mm -hmm. once you get up and speak. <laughs> Funny how that is. Time is yeah. a strange thing that way, for sure. Um, you know, Amy, were you an opener? Were you a closer or were you in between? I think I was uh, I was in the second half okay. of it. Yeah. Yeah. What advice do you have for people in the second half? Uh, well, I think it's really important to keep your energy up, uh, you know, because you're and we actually performed it twice ah. that night. So they did two sh shows and really? um, yeah. Wow. That's a lot of tickets sold. 
Yeah, it was it was sold out <laughs> both shows. Yeah, so that's a first. I haven't I haven't heard that before. So they had you, you just you all all up all down. You had two shots at it. Yeah, yeah. and then I think they recorded the second one. Uh, so I think what's really important is um, making sure you're walking around, you're eating at the right times, not overeating, but like so that you keep your energy up. Because especially in my case. You know, we did it like around dinner time, then it was finished around eight. I think we started another one at eight o'clock or eight thirty at night. So it oh was my getting word. oh my know, word. That's like the late. midnight yeah. matinee. Yeah. So it was oh my word. total, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is an unusual uh, organization. Yeah, you start well, it after dinner time. <laughs> yeah. I, I just hope somebody, you know, don't <laughs> talk universe, just a good idea. Don't stay away from the all you can eat buffet when, right. when you're on deck. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to say that that is really unusual. How about yeah. that? All right. So uh, that that's very, like I said, very unusual. I'm going to ask you this question. So beh besides what you just told me, which is already very strange, what was the <laughs> most, the most unexpected, most strange or most just plain weird thing that happened before or during your talk? Either, either one of them that evening. Uh, hmm. Good question. I don't know. Uh, you know, I I think the fact uh, with my talk, I think we were controlling the slides. And I think on one, it wasn't exactly working at the right, or they weren't clicking mm -hmm. at it at the right time. And that's, again, where you have to be really good at controlling your material because one of the slides I think that didn't go up was kind of a critical slide for mm -hmm. me. And you can't show that something's missing or that you're disappointed or anything like that. You just have to kind of push through it and make sure that no one feels the experience is any different. And I think as a speaker, what I always tell other people is you have to remember when you're speaking, it's not about you. Mm -hmm. It's about the audience coming for their own experience, their own learning. And if you start getting in your head, about something like that, you ruin somebody else's experience. Great advice. Oh, my word. We've been having the blitz round with Amy <laughs> Vetter. Her talk is called Disconnect to Connect, the Path to Work-Life Harmony. And if you want to check out that talk, you can go to our show notes page at bethetalk.com. If you don't want to type it all out in YouTube, and we will have a link to that talk. We will also have a link to Amy's website, amyvetter.com, A-M-Y-V-E-T-T-E-R.com, amyvetter.com. And you can find out about her book and everything else that she is up to. Now, we're going to be right back in just a moment for the final word of advice. And it's time for the final word of advice with Amy Vetter. What is it, Amy? Live a life true to yourself. Well said. Amy Vetter, thank you so much for coming on the talk today and sharing your wisdom with Talk Universe. Thank you. All right. That's a wrap. All right. Great. Thank you for having me on. Hey, you're welcome. And thanks all of you for spreading the message. Come on, yeah. wiggle the finger over the, <laughs> over the share button. People need to hear this. <laughs> Who better to hear it from than Amy Vetter? I'm going to shut off the broadcast right now, go offline with Amy and uh, look for this podcast episode up in about, we're about eight weeks out at this point. So can't wait. And thanks so much for joining us, everybody.